Ready? What's up, dude? What up, what up, dude? How you doing, bro? Good, how are you? Just marking them up again. Okay, what do we got tagged here? Religion definitely found me through football. Just having that piece of art just like engraved in my body and let go of everything that you're worried about or whatever you're facing and just put it all on your face. Javery should get number one. Outside receiver should go to safety. The more I played, the more I just like my faith kept growing and like my relationship with God is just unmatched. How we doing? I went to this church for the first time with my dad. You are still working. We never pushed it on him, um, but what we did do is, you know, at the end of the day, we knew it was a higher power, right? And he goes on to tell us that we have to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Football is a hard game. It's physical. Every athlete even has to have some level of faith within themselves. Amen. Amen. That's what to work. You got to believe that you can accomplish the task that are put in front of you. You have a lot of pressure on you to win, or you have a lot of pressure on to be a, at a certain level. And it had to be a higher power and a higher faith. He's always have his gold necklace on him. And one day, he was out in the field and he's lost it. And he felt like he might have lost all the power. Couldn't throw the ball. He couldn't feel like he could get reads. He couldn't do it. And it was just all about, I can't believe I lost my chain. I need my cross chain. And I probably went to every J.C. Penney or every place I could to make sure I can replace it before Friday night because he needed that power uh, of faith back with him, right? And that's just how strong he is. And uh, he's not ashamed to say it either. A lot of kids out there could have the same fate, but maybe feel like it's not appropriate in the arena of macho football. I've seen that become part of his natural preparation. Athletically, he's a freak athlete. Um, his abilities are off the charts. DeMond's freshman year, you know, you could just tell that he had something that nobody else had. DeMond Willem Jr. is the top rated quarterback in Arizona, and he has definitely earned that ranking. Everybody always asks about his height first. Some people just don't think that being under six foot, you can't, like, some people just don't think you can play quarterback under six foot. The number one pick in the NFL draft this year is 5'10", quarterback, right? So I personally feel it's much harder to prepare for a quarterback who's a dual threat kid than some taller kid who can just sit back there and swing it, right? Like, I just, I, I wouldn't want to prepare for a D. That's, that's for sure. His family's very close-knit. And if you look at him decommitting from Ole Miss, I think that's one of the reasons why he did so. I would say I just left it in God's hands for real. Like, I just kind of slept on it a lot. He, uh, he prayed about it, and he said, look, you know what? My decision, Dad, is I am going to step back from Ole Miss, and I am going to really open up to, to Arizona. Ready, take out. <laughs> Faith is a, is a huge component to football because it helps you to go beyond what you could do on your own. You guys want a picture? Yeah. There's, there's a reason why this is called God-given ability. And what I often instruct is the players to do is right. that ability that you've been given by God is important for you to give it back. Everybody get in, everybody get in. Ready to go, one, two, three, good. I love you, D!
time when Mountain View was a, a dominant football program for many, many, many years. I think they're kind of all in on getting back to their, their glory days. Mountain View is a rising 6A team. They are loaded with young talent. And we play at our level. We don't do what? We don't do that. We good? Yes, sir. You guys have worked too hard to come out here and lay an egg tonight. This is what it's about. That is not a game that not only Basham, but any team in the state can just walk in and expect to win. Pass the to number 13, Travis Pennington. Pass the situation. Um, I was lined up on the outside. They slanted me. Uh, the guard didn't see me coming. I ripped through him. Got up, man, and, and gave him the bulls. You know what I'm saying? So the play starts. You look for keys that you see in film during the week. Try to find those keys and try to visualize what the play could possibly be just by knowing what they run. Coach always tells me to look for the three on the right side if I'm dropping into my zone. Having to be at the right place at the right time. Hey! Hey! And a baby! Here we go, Eli! Throw it! Throw it! Okay! Go, baby! Go, baby! Go! The pre-snap, the two safeties were high, so I knew I had to split them, and then after that, it's just off to the races. I bobbled it a little bit. I bobbled it a little bit, but still a touchdown. You can't have run through. So get that line, D lineman? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So dude just, on the outside, he's not going to get the play. Okay. Yeah. So just step inside and take that away. Dash returned a punt uh, for a touchdown. It was unfortunately called back due to a holding. Vince Lindsay came off the field and he owned it. What'd you do? All right. Well, apologize to Dash, man. He took a touchdown away from him. You know what I'm saying? Hey. Way to man up. If we don't own our own failures, that's on us. He took accountability for it, and you know, that's what you want. Timeout! Time out! Time out! Time out! That, right? That's your guys' time to eat, eat, eat. So let's eat them up inside now. Let's eat them up inside. Noah Roberts had a really nice run up the middle. Somebody hit him high and somebody hit him low, and I think that his, his foot got caught. Sprain, high ankle. Yeah. It's the worst type of ankle sprain you can you can have. It takes the longest to uh, to heal and recover and come go. back from. Get him, get him, get him! Here we go, here we go, get him, get him. Oh! We didn't think we'd have an opportunity to even have a return. Their kicker puts it well into the end zone right every back, single right time. It fell short to me, so I caught go, up go, in one. Go, go. Made a move on the kicker and just took off. Go, baby! Once he gets in front of everybody, yeah. and you're, you're not going to chase him down. 99 yards. I, why not? Why not, huh? Why not, huh? Why, David? Nice. Yes, I was concerned that this might be a trap game. There's a process to this, and, and you've got to embrace the process of winning. We're not entitled to win. We can't just show up on a Friday and win. Really good job to come out from the gate and all gas, no brakes, right? That was a really good job. Really proud of your guys' effort. You ready? But I'll show, I'll show you the new one. It's gonna be, it's gonna be nice. But when you, when you broke up the middle, that's the thing about kickoff returns. If you can get past like the first like, like 20 yards, oh, you have a chance of scoring every time. Because it's really like two or three people that can attack you. Yeah, I was running. And, you shook the and I started running this way. I was like, kick off. Down yeah. You look like me. I love Jack Blyer. Natural position is linebacker. But they moved him to edge rusher last year because it was a, a position of need for them. I would do anything to get on that field. And he just gained a ton of weight to play defensive end. Started with a lot of ground bison, which is a very like fattening and protein-wise. He was like, man, I was eating you know, five to 6,000 calories a day just to try to put on 20 pounds. And he beefed up, and he became one of the top edge rushers in the state of Arizona last year. He had a million tackles for loss, creating havoc in the backfield every week. You look at the box score last year, like, man, this guy is, is an incredible edge rusher. He must have played there his entire life. Nope, natural linebacker. I had I think, 10 and a half sacks, 101 tackles, uh, first team, maybe all region, first team conference, I don't know, something like that. So 
definitely for being first year ever playing the position, I, I think I did pretty good. They graduated a ton of their linebacking core. Coach Mack went to them and said, hey, time to play linebacker. And so it was kind of, his off-season preparation was almost flipped. After that season, I actually wanted to gain more weight. But I want to get shredded, I want to get cut, and I want to get fast. And he did exactly that. There you go! There you go, nice play, Jack! Hell of a play! The violence is still there, the speed has doubled, and he's a tremendous tackler. I definitely think I've molded back into what I used to be a linebacker for sure. So. What a play by Jack Blyer out in the open field, just running full speed, able to break down and still get a grab on that jersey. You know, it's, it's only a compliment in football. He's nasty. That's what I want to be described as, a nasty player, I guess, going out there just wanting to kill people and rip their heads off. This is weird. Weird formations that you don't see a lot. O'Connor runs a lot of wing T, which is like a three running back set. They have three running backs in the backfield, um, and then they'll play with one receiver and a tight end. I don't know why he's squeezing right here when he's right here. And he, look, right there. JJ, but JJ made him miss, though. So it's going to be a long day, guys. All right, so prepare for that. It's going to be our longest one, and then we're done with our road trips, except we got one more. When we get on that bus, let's make sure we don't sleep the whole time. Right? You sleep the whole time, you're going to wake up, it's groggy, and then you get up. We know it's far, but, you know, we're going there to play a football game, and we're not going to allow something like that to dictate any type of way we play. They're a two and two team right now. They made the Open last year. I know that they want to get back to the Open as well. There's no reason why we can't play with this team. There's no reason why we can't beat these guys. Understand that? So go hit them, hit them again, punch them in the mouth, pick them up, hit them again. Time to finish. We got that? Let's go finish. Let's go. Yeah! Let's go. Kill on me. Kill on me. Looking at their schedule after us, they have a very good shot of winning out. Touch back on the kick. Football, Their return to the Open really is determined by what happens this Friday. Oh my God, 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 oh my God. It's really a tale of two teams that are extremely different. Oh my God, we got them all, this is great. We want to be an explosive team. We want to focus on explosives. We want to focus on big plays. We want to focus on putting points on the board. Now you look at the safety picked up. You use They do things that we don't see all year. Be the only time we see this type of offense being run this year. Oh, there you go, wing T, over, over. They're a double wing under center. Uh, wing T team, primarily run. They want to be uh, a team that uh, is three yards in a cloud of dust. Then slowly, trudgingly moving the ball down the field and wearing you out. And their passing game is going to consist of play actions of boots and waggles and things of that nature, showing the run game first. Get the first down. Falling down like a wet noodle. Guys, what we're doing is working. Let's just stick with it. Whenever, whenever they walk up like that, they're a man. No, but, yeah. but, so the ball can be out quick. Yeah. We're going to utilize DeMond's strengths and keep the ball in the air and, and kind of use the pass to set up the run. Nice job. You know, we have enough speed in our, in our receiver position, enough weapons there where um, it's hard to cover all those guys. JJ might get a touchdown right here. And, and D is really good at finding open receivers down the field. You know? Get some, JJ! Ah! JJ got one! JJ got one! Touchdown, Bat. <laughs> Look at Denny! Denny, you better give him some love! <laughs> For now, back to 48 0 0. 
they've got to be extremely disciplined. Everybody does in their reads and keys in terms of not following the ball and getting dirty eyes. We call it dirty eyes when you're following the ball and not understanding your reads and keys up front. We have a running clock, we're done. Yeah. It's still a running clock? Yeah, yeah. because we scored 48 points. Ah. Oh. Yeah, so we got like one off at the drive. In the first half. I thought it was you. <laughs> what? Hey, congratulations. Congrats. Congratulations, Coop. <laughs> it was a great team win, guys. I'm really, really proud. But We're starting to click. To, in a couple weeks, you have some big Let's games. Talk about next week. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't pass over anybody. We haven't played a home game in a long time, and we know what happened last time we played at home. All right, so we should have a little fire in the belly. We good? We got a really short week coming up. Games on Thursday, right? We've got a Brophy team that thinks they're the new kids on the block, right? A lot of chatter, a lot of hype. So we got to make sure we send a message. We good with that? All in on three, one, two, three. All in. Hey, yo, we're blessed tomorrow. Black, we're wearing black. Hey, we're purple, game. Okay?